All right, we got part three of this video series. You can see behind me, we have more trees on the ground. Uh, after work a little bit this week, I spent some time chipping up some more trees, bucking up some more firewood. You can see we got quite a pile going. So today we're gonna get through, we're gonna chip up the tops of these trees. We're gonna take the logs off the bottom, just throw them in a pile because we don't need to worry about the firewood right now, just to save some time. We're gonna get back through just like we did the last time and clear a lot of the smaller stuff. So we're gonna back up, lay waste all that, and we're gonna see how much more we can get done today and show you a little bit more about this wood chipper and how this tractor runs. All right, we've got our tops all chipped up. We've got all the trunks of the trees bucked up for firewood and piled up. So what we're gonna do now, you can see in here, uh, we've got some dead trees that have been on the ground for a while. So what we're gonna do is pick all these up out of the way. And you can see all this scrubby stuff, all these new shoots that popped up. What we're gonna do is go get our brush cutter and kind of mow all this stuff down. It just, right now it's a tripping hazard as we go through and try to clean up some of this stuff. So we're gonna get this cleaned up the best we can. So as we cut down more trees, we're not tripping over ourselves and falling over. Uh, so what we're gonna do now, we're gonna pick up some of this stuff. I really like using the pickaroon. You know, you don't have to be down on your hands and knees picking the stuff up. Um, some of this, this one's in really bad shape but we still kind of need to get it out of the way so we can pry with this and, and pull this stuff up. Because that, that brush cutter, although it is self-powered, like a rototiller, you know, pulls over, it has a harder time with some of this, the logs that are down. So the nice thing with this pick, I kind of busted all that stuff up, it was frozen down to the ground. Or with this bigger stuff, we're able to go in here and stab this. I get this turned a little bit better. We come in with the forks with the tractor, so now I have a better avenue to come in here and pick this up. So let's pry it down out of the way. So with that one out of the way, we got one more. I'm gonna buck it up real quick. And then what I'm gonna do is use the pick to pull it, up, pull it off the ground, that way I'm not bending over. So I'm gonna cut it up real quick. So I'll show you real quick. I'm gonna cut that up. We'll see. So I can just pick that. I can pull this, same thing. I can pull this out without bending over and I can come in with a tractor and use the forks to pick this up and we'll go put this uh, into a different pile. So we'll get this finished up and we'll show you how the brush cutter works. We're gonna use this walk behind brush cutter now to knock down some of the smaller stuff. Um, I picked up this machine uh, at an auction a couple years back and I kind of have a love-hate relationship with auctions around here. There's not that many auctions, so the turnout's usually pretty good and some of the auctioneers are pretty good, so they get a good, um, get a good crowd that follows them around. So this was one of the items that was listed that I really wanted to buy. And right, this is a Billy Goat brand. Uh, DR is another popular model for, for items like this. The last time I checked, these are over $2,000 brand new for a similar comparable model to this. And that was just something for the amount of use I thought I would get out of it, just wasn't gonna be worth it. So when I saw this at the local auction, I had it out there and it turned out to be an all day ordeal. But the nice thing was it was on the back of the lot. It was one of the last items to go. It started raining, the people dropped out. So I was able to pick this up for 500 bucks. So for me, this was definitely worth 500 bucks for the amount of use that I was gonna get out of it. So you kind of got to keep an eye out um, when you're looking at used equipment, uh, find some of them auctions, maybe Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace, things like that where you can get a good deal on equipment. I also did luck out. This is set up with the Honda motor. It fired up right away. Everything worked. There was a couple quirks, as you can see. I got the vice grips on here. The throttle, the throttle cable uh, ended up breaking shortly after I, I bought it. Um, so I needed to just, I modified it with vice grips instead of buying a new one. It needed some new belts. I ended up putting new tires on it, um, which I learned how to do that by myself because I physically couldn't get the rim off. So I learned how to swap the tires. So I did have to add a little bit of money. I had maybe between the belts and the tires, you know, another $150 in, uh, in cost on top of buying the machine. But that was over time, you know, as I needed uh, to change some of that stuff. So we're gonna fire this up. We're gonna show you kind of how that works. Um, and uh, what the finished product looks like after you're done mowing over.
type of reed grass that grows up, probably eight foot tall, and this thing just walks over and chews that stuff right up. So instead of really wasting a lot of time, you know, with, even with a good uh, trimmer, like a street trimmer, but if you have like a heavy blade on it, that really wears your arms out. We're compared to using this, it's a little bit of a workout manipulated side to side to turn. all cleaned up and really make it easier to walk around as we cut more of these trees down and uh, chip up some of the smaller stuff. So we're going to get this finished up. We'll see you guys in the next video after we get some more of this wrapped up. Keep an eye out.